Hello guys, uh, my name is Evans and uh, welcome to this uh, video tutorial. Uh, we're going to continue looking at um, uh, step number 16 from the um, October-November 2016 ICT exam. In the last video we ended on step number 15 and uh, in this video we're going to focus on step number 16. So let's go ahead and uh, look at 16. So the section with the heading and virus um, with the heading and, and virus policy is incomplete. You are required to enter some information about prevention of viruses. Okay, so they identify three methods of preventing viruses and enter your answers after the text. And um, methods of preventing viruses, three of which are okay. So that's the text that you you need to enter um, after that text. So let's go ahead and um, do that. So in our work here, so staff should be aware of the main methods of preventing viruses three of which are so just verify that this is the text that the method of preventing viruses three of, three of which are that's that so how you can also find this text is you can find and search uh, just hit control F on your keyboard and then type in the text that you want for example uh, control F on the keyboard will bring the navigation here and then you can search uh, for that uh, so you can say methods of preventing and automatically you will see that um, you are getting there okay so that is that so the next thing that we are supposed to do is to populate this um, section with the different methods that you are, are going to use to uh, prevent viruses so one what's the first method the first method the first method is actually um, going to be um, Let's start first of all with a discussion. <laughs> and I, don't, I, just don't, I, just, I just don't like giving answers like that. It's as though you won't learn anything. You can just look at the mark scheme and do that. But let's discuss first of all uh, different, different methods that you can prevent uh, viruses. So uh, one of the ways in which viruses are spread on the computer or on the network um, is that um, they are transferred from one computer to the other. As long as two computers are linked, or there will be a device or a device is linked to a computer there is possibility that a virus can be trans um, transferred from either a, um, a storage device uh, to the computer or from a network onto the computer by network we can uh, viruses can be transmitted uh, through a local area network they can be transmitted through um, the internet uh, which is the wide area network and um, you guys you need to be aware so the best possible option that you need um, uh, in order to prevent uh, viruses is that you should have a software that is dedicated to monitoring that your computer is safe from viruses so what a virus software does is that it checks the traffic that is coming to your computer and scrutinizes it okay searching it um, uh, um, for possible unwanted programs okay or possible software that is uh, malicious or that is suspicious and then it's going to flag an error or not an error <laughs> but a message that uh, the file that you want to open or the file that is uh, uh, has come to your computer contains some virus of some kind okay so the first method that we want to do is that uh, we want to make sure that our virus software is actually in perfect condition it is updated and it is working and then also we want to make sure that um, uh, when we um, bring in external uh, uh, um, storage devices such as flash disks, um, uh, such as um, uh, external hard disks and stuff like that. These are actually scanned before they are plugged in onto the computer. Most phones nowadays, they do catch uh, these smartphones, they do catch viruses and sometimes you'd want to upload a, a song from a phone and only to find that um, you've actually uploaded a, vi <laughs> a virus onto your computer from your phone. Okay, So you need to make sure that uh, you actually scan the device that you connect to the computer if at all you're going to access anything on that device and um, the other part is that um, these viruses sometimes they can be sent through malicious emails and um, some some emails they come with attachments maybe say no you've just received or won a jackpot click here so that uh, you can access this uh, money or stuff like that and um, when you when you open that and this um, they say that curiosity killed the cat <laughs> when you're curious you don't know what um, what you um, some package you've been given on the internet uh, contains don't open it okay as long as you don't know the source you don't know you're not even expecting it 
don't open it. Sometimes it can be from a picture. You say, wow, look at this, and uh, this person did this or did that. And it can be eye-catching, and you, your heart is tempting you. <laughs> your heart is beating. Your heart is beating <laughs> in your chest. And then we can even see it. The, the, the pauses, we can see them um, on your shirt. <laughs> Ah, okay, so let's go ahead. So the first thing that we want to do is that uh, don't open uh, suspicious uh, email attachment. Okay, don't open suspicious email attachments. That's what we said. Okay, and um, next is that. Um, so just mind the way attachments there. Next you have is um, let's see. Mm, what did we talk about? So we talked about installing an updated antivirus antivirus software. Antivirus software. Okay. And the last part, what we want is that the yeah, when we say we install the and updated and virus software, yeah, that that's that's fine. And okay, the last part that we want is that um, we should we should we sh or scan. Okay, you should scan all external storage devices. Storage external storage um, if you want you can call them portable devices okay you should scan them so that once um, you plug them onto the computer they do not actually leave viruses there okay so this is perfectly fine um, the next thing that you're supposed to do is to that step okay step 17 change the list from child protection to confidentiality to a numbered list okay so let's go ahead and do that so from here to there change this to a numbered list just click there like that next format this list so that the numbers are right aligned to the margin left margin with no space after each line okay so no space after each line so go ahead and change uh, the paragraph properties. So after each line, there shouldn't be space. So just remove the space, okay, and say okay. So it should be like that. And then also we should format that it should be aligned, okay, with the left margin. So how you do that? Um, um, I wish there was a way that you could do that just on the keyboard, um, but. Um, there is there is no way in some section there could have been a way you could do that let me just undo this one okay so what we want is to move this line here so that it is aligned to the left margin and then also move what did i do okay just drag this so that it is aligned to the left margin okay um just drag this one right there okay so make sure that it is left aligned okay um, so the other option if it was like this I'm trying to see if um, let me just undo it again it's good to try some of this stuff I'm trying to see if I align it to the left margin like this it can move so it can not move so the only way that we can align it to the margin is by dragging it um, let me see now I'm confusing it <laughs> Okay, so we need to drag this one uh, all the way there. Just drag it like that. And just make sure that this one is within the boundaries of um, the margin, as you can see. So that is perfectly fine. So what I'm going to do is just to put some space after this so that um, this doesn't uh, get attached to this one. Okay, so this one is perfectly fine. Um, you guys, you need what you need to do is to make sure that um, you know how to maneuver your rule. If you don't have the uh, the ruler here, uh, what you can do is just go on view and uh, make sure that the ruler is selected there. Okay, 
So next step is step 19. Spell check and proofread the document and make sure that tables and lists are not split over two columns or pages. And um, so we can we'll do that. Then there are no widows or orphans and there are no blank pages and the house style specification has been followed and correct styles applied as instructed. And spacing between all items is consistent. So let's go ahead and check all that. So let's look at the orphans first of all. Sentences that are hanging on their own or headings that are hanging out on their own like this one here. It shouldn't be there. So just push it. Go ahead and just tap enter key on your keyboard. Push it to the next line. Okay. Then also we need to proofread this document. So tap F7 on your keyboard to make sure that we don't have um, errors. So this one is a noun. So just ignore it. And then this one is also a noun. Ignore it. A noun can be any other name that is not English. Okay. And then committed is supposed to be like that not triple m it's supposed to be double m so just say change and then attend is supposed to be double t not one t and say change and then tawara is a noun so don't change that just say ignore all and then well-being now well-being um some people would rather uh, put a hyphen in between there and some people would put it just as a one word uh, as it is um, and when it is written also as well-being like that it is still perfectly fine Okay, um, there are some words that um, they are not necessarily uh, violating the grammar and stuff like that, but um, they are just <laughs> they're just there. <laughs> okay, so this is this is perfectly fine. It is referring to the same thing as you can see even down here. You have well-being, uh, well-being like this, so it's still fine. So I'll leave it as it is, and I won't change it. It's the same thing with mentor here. Um, it is underlined, but it's still fine. Okay. So let's go ahead and uh, close this and uh, let's check if we have any red text that is underlined. Okay, so as it is, we do not have any text that is underlined in red. So this has been um, proofread and it is perfectly fine. Um, the other thing that we checked is that the, the spacing between items is consistent and then this is why we had to push um, the text that was just under confidentiality, I remember I did put a line space here because we wanted space to be consistent as the new paragraph starts. Okay, so then uh, there are no blank pages, there are no widows or orphans, and the tables are not split over two columns. Okay, so this is um, this is perfectly fine. Save the document using the file name that you saved in form in, uh, and, and format used in step two, and then you print the document and make sure that you have entered your name, center number, and candidate number on your report. Okay, so let's go ahead and save this document. File, save as, and then save in the current folder and save it as this one. Okay, so that's perfectly fine. Now, this marks the end of the section of um, um, document production. The next section that we are going to look at is um, database and that will be in the next video. So for now, I'm going to end this video here and uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. But remember to subscribe, like, comment and um, co um, you guys share this video with your friends and schoolmates and uh, your friends uh, anywhere else and uh, whoever is interested in ICT. <laughs> alright, so guys, I'll see you in the next video and uh, <laughs> alright, so...